sister, younger sister? Younger. All right, cool. What what, are you, what math are you, what science are you taking? Oh. She's eighth grade. Oh. <laughs> wait, yeah. wait. So you learned about the graphs, about the. Uh, no, she's um. She just did the, the season. She's in eighth grade. Oh, seasons. Your ninth graders are doing the graphs. Yeah. Got it. I was going to say, because that applies perfectly to what we're doing. All right. So physics is, we're, we're going to kind of basically play MacGyver See. on a lot of this stuff. So, I will, you know, I, I didn't have all the lab stuff ready, but see, that's the beauty about physics. What I love about physics is that I actually used to have a, a tennis ball on my desk when I would study physics. And I would throw it around, and I would watch the motion, and I would see things happening. And, and I could feel it, I could throw it, I could beam it at someone's face if I wanted to. This is physics. It's, it's interacting with things. And the math of it all comes together. Now, there's going to be an equation that I'm going to, uh, that I'm going to use. And I'm going to spend maybe half an hour doing a quick lecture just so that, because my biggest pet peeve, has always been. Do you guys know what my pet peeve is since you guys have have had me as a teacher before? I'm forgetting your middle name? No. Your first name? Oh, just pulling equations out of your butt and... Ah, <laughs> there we go. You remembered it. I, I can't I stand that. it when teachers just kind of, here's the quadratic equation, memorize it. You know what I mean? Like it bugs me. Yeah. It's gross. <laughs> right? Okay, so, sure. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a half hour kind of teaching you the basics of things. I'll be honest with you, I am i haven't lectured really on, um, the last, the first time we, we had a chance to lecture was like on the units of acceleration, yeah. right? And that is kind of covered in uh, the Paul Hewitt conceptual physics thing. He didn't really go into units. The next chapter we're gonna talk about is like the math you need and I think that a lot of that, that section is about like scientific notation and that kind of stuff. While it's important, it is extremely important, I'm gonna actually move on to linear motion. I'm gonna get start getting into like, let's hit physics. Mm -hmm. But on the way there, I'm gonna make sure that I stop on these pit stops because the thing that will screw you up in physics is your inability to do algebra. Yeah, and this is not just baby algebra two stuff. We're talking about like algebra, like you understand algebra real well. Bro. It's going to be kind of an algebra that you might have not have seen before, but I guarantee you've seen it before. You just might not have used it in this way. So let me, without further ado, let me pull an equation out of my book, throw it up on board and say, uh, here's an equation, write it down. This is probably the one, this is the most important equation you're going to be learning about in uh, this class. Delta x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. Write it down. Do you need a pencil paper? No, oh, man, I got it. All right. I've already got my delta. It's it's in, it's in your head. Hmm? But no, you're typing. I, I've legitimately that, got the delta. All right, fine. What's that squiggly line at the? Write this down. Write write it down. You're gonna, I'm going to have too many equations for you to type things out. But I commend you because I actually, if you like typing your math. I used to type up all of my notes in class while the teacher was lecturing. I could type as quickly. And it's a special format that I learned how to do, not on Microsoft Word or whatever, or even like uh, Google Docs that you're using. It's a program called LaTeX. I'll teach it to you one day. Um, okay. It's probably one of the best things that someone taught me how to do. Remember that textbook I showed you? Yeah, uh, LaTeX. That's how I did it. Really? Yeah. All right. Anyway, delta x equals b naught t plus 1 have 8 squared. What's your questions? Squiggly line at the very end. That's a T. No, 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 no. Above the T. That's a square. Okay. That's a two then. That's a two. two. Okay. All right. Where did this equation come from? Okay. Let me, let me, um, yeah, I'm going to show you where this equation came from, and then I'm going to show you the coolness of units, and then we'll apply this to some actual physics that we're going to be doing. With this. Um, where did this equation come from? This is one of my favorite lectures. Um, if I had, I'm going to call this a graph. This is like a velocity time graph. Okay? Can you guys envision this in your head? Now, 
if I were a race car driver, at, at time equals zero, before they said go, what is my velocity? Zero. You're anything you're, at, 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 you know, at the light with his imported, like, you know, Skylander, Sky... Skylander. Was it? Is it Skylander? Or? No, what are talking about? Well, it was this imported, like, super, super, yeah, whatever, whatever Japanese car. Skylander. Yeah, is it Skylander. It's called no a Skyliner. Idea. That's what it is. Skyliner. Okay. Yeah. So he's got this super cool imported Japanese car, and he's all like, vroom, 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 right? Vroom, 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 right? And then, like, um, and then the, the it turns green light. What would his velocity look like when he steps on there? What do you mean when he's going, boom? Like that. No, no. Okay. Right, it would break his neck first. This would kind of like, <laughs> like that, right? What would happen is it, happen. it would be a line like that, Yeah. right? And then after a while, it would level off. Level off because that would be, the velocity would be going from zero up to this, and then it would kind of reach a top speed. Now, the better the car, the faster this thing grows, and the higher the top speed is, right? If it's a better car, you get a higher higher acceleration, and also a higher top speed. Yeah. The slope of this line is actually called the acceleration. It's how much your velocity is changing over time. Do you guys remember, do you guys remember, um, the equation for acceleration? Do you guys remember this? Mx plus b? Yes. I hated that thing. Okay, all right, all right. Yes. What is this describing? This is describing a line Right? It's a slope. That has a slope of m and a intercept of b, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. Before I get to this equation, there's four equations that I'm going to show you. Right. Can you give him an extra pencil and paper? I'll, be awesome. I'll show you all four equations right now. Ready? I'll keep out. So I'm making lots of yeah, throwing yeah, stuff up on the board. A lot of pet peeves at the Look. moment. Look. These are the four equations we're going to use pretty much for the rest of the quarter, and that's Thank it. Thank you very much. Really? Okay. You want to know about the beauty of physics? I'm not no. going to ask you to memorize almost anything. Is it like the entire period on the table? Nope. Chemistry? Oh. Nope. Really? Nope. That's what about the, what about seven I'm nine literally dollars? going to ask you to memorize four, maybe five equations. Roger. And, and you know what? I'm not even going to ask you to memorize them. Just have them. I'm going to ask you to write them down and put them in a place that you can go back to to make sure you refer to them. That's one of the four. Uh, this is the third one. Third one. I'll show you all, all four of them right now. Ready? Yeah. Um, it's V final equals V initial plus AT. And actually, I, I don't usually write the F there. I just put V. Right. Because And then the V zero, I usually put as V naught. Yeah. I call it, right? Uh, the next one is delta X equals um, equals V initial plus V over 2 times T. Yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah. All right, and then the next one is delta X equals V not T plus 1 half AT squared. Oh, cool? very good. What? Huh? Yeah, no, nothing. That's that's Yeah, the you wrote it down. Right. And then this last one is V squared is equal to V not squared plus 2a delta x. This, my friend, you are currently the only person in this conference. That's cool. All right. This, my friend, <laughs> is the four main equations. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to teach you another equation, I think, for another, like, month or two. Sweet. So this is as hard as it gets. Okay. Uh, physics is harder than chemistry, by the way, just letting you know. So you guys aren't off the hook. Yeah. You're going to see it all come together and you're going to be like, man, it's so freaking cool, but it's hard, but it's cool. <laughs> which is which is what my chemistry was like. Anyway, <laughs> um, so check this out. Check this out. What if, I, what if I were to apply this idea to this graph? Let's say that we will have a graph that looks like this. And um, the velocity over here was a velocity initial. Got it? How did you do that? It's just, it's just, you're, you know, like, it's kind of like, instead of starting from, uh, you know, kind of like burning zero, your car before you, you, you started a little bit behind and then, oh. and then bef like a second before they said go, you started accelerating, you know, you started going. 
so that when they said go, your car was already moving. I'll keep that. You're cheating. Mm -hmm. Cheater. All right. But apply this to this. So instead of a Y, our Y axis is the vertical one, right? So we would have a V, right? Right. V equals M. M is your slope. It's also, I told you, what is the slope of this kind of graph? It's known as acceleration. Acceleration. So instead of an M, I'm going to put an A, in, a there. Is that all right with you guys? Yes. All right. X, I'm going to replace with a what? T. T. Perfect. And instead of a B, what am I going to, what am I going to have? V intercept. V not. V not. V oh. initial. It's the velocity you were moving at uh, the beginning. Are we cool? Right. Guess what? Go! No Check. way. Whoa, that is it. Oh, cool. Oh, that's it? cool. That's all. I mean, all this is is y equals mx plus b. <laughs> that's all it is. That's awesome. Right? All right. Let's go for the next equation, okay? This is going to take some really crazy math. You want to see the math? Yes. Sure. All right, here. I, I have two questions for you. Can I? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, the first question is, what is the area of this? Or uh, times the length times the width. Oh, good, good. You understand yes. that. Okay, good. Just make it sure. Yeah. All right. Were you being for real there? What is the area one half base times base times of time. that? One half base times time. One half base times time. Okay, okay. So you guys know how to do that, right? Yes. All right, good. Just, just making sure. Are you being legit? I'm being legit. Okay. He's, he's yeah, building up. Yeah. He's building up. I'm building it up. I'm, I'm making sure. I'm building physics. Here comes the circle. Dumb things that you know. Here comes the circle. <laughs> the circle. What's the circle? Circle. When it, it's all going to come together. Okay, right. all right, fine. Well, well, there's one more thing that I need to try to convince you, and I don't think it's going to take much of a convincing. If I were to have a velocity time graph, and I were going at a constant 60 miles per hour, okay, what would that graph look like? A straight line. Just be a straight line. Be a straight line. Good. Here's one hour. Here's two hours. In two hours, how far would I go? If I was going a constant 60 miles, 120, 120, not 20 miles per hour, it would be 120 miles total, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> and, and would I be able to say, would I be able to convince you that um, I can get that by just saying, well, that's 60 times 2? Yes. In fact, 60 times 2, that's the area well. of that. Well, right? Okay. It is. Yes. So, that is so if I had some kind of velocity time graph that was real funky like this, if if there was some way that I could figure out the area of this thing, right? Right. If there was some way I could figure out the area of this thing, um, that would be the distance that I travel. Okay. Would I be able to convince you of that? In fact, write this sentence down. The area under the curve of a velocity time graph is the distance traveled. And it makes sense to you with that 60 in two hours example, right? You guys ready? Yes. Yeah. All right, but do you guys agree with that statement? It, yeah, that it makes sense. Looks right, to right. be. It's a bit deceiving. Factual. Then let me try this one on for size. Oh, great. In this in this scenario, two seconds before they said go, you started going. So at exactly time equals zero, you were already moving at a velocity initial. Right. At the end of the race, you were moving at some velocity final. This is before you topped off your speed, so you know you just constantly went on. Yeah. Okay. Maybe this is going from one stoplight to another. You didn't reach top speed between in a block. Yeah. Okay. How far did you go? We'll call that D. Okay. Since time started? 
Yes. It would be that area. Right. Would you agree? Yes. Good. Is that a triangle? It's not a triangle. It's a rhombus. Yeah. No, it's a trapezoid. A trapezoid. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yes. What's your thoughts? Oh, wait, I'm not. Well, how do you figure this out? What's the area of this thing? Come on. Use your big brain. You, you have to figure out the area of the triangle and the area of the rectangle. Ah, so you see an air, a triangle and a rectangle somewhere in this trapezoid. Yeah, it's, yes. Oh, yeah. No constant at the end. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, by the way, this is, goes from t equals 0 to t equals t. Oh. I could say t final, but there's no point in putting a t final. No. Technically, I would want delta t, right? But well, we talked about this before. Yeah. Delta t is t final minus t initial. And we pretty much always set t initial to be zero. Yeah. So we can just say delta t is the same as just t. t. Right. So are we cool with that? Yes. So I'm just going to call that t. Even though this is my t axis, this is my t variable. OK. Correct. All right. So what's the area of the, of the square? Rectangle. Uh, it would be v initial v initial t. t. v not t. Got it? Oh. <laughs> OK. All right. What about the area of this thing right here? The initial times v final times half of the right. I can already what? see it. Yeah. <laughs> I can already see it. What? What? It's, it's, it's not that. It's not that. It's the one above it. Okay. So it's. it's what the is the area of this it. thing? All right, uh, fine. What's the base? One the half. Initial. All right, oh, so we know we're going to add it, right? And we know it's going to be one half base times height. So what is the base T. of this triangle? T. 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 Good. What is the height of this triangle? Uh, B final? Is it B final? It's that tall? No. It's V initial. V initial plus B final. It's that tall? Because here's B final, here's no, B it's initial. Just, it's just like that tall? Whatever V, it's the, oh. V final. Got oh geez. If this is V final up here, this is V initial down here, I only want the height from here to here. V final, v final. plus. Minus? V final minus V initial. Yes. Because V final is this whole height from here to here. V initial is the height minus, from here to here. Okay, okay. So I just want to take uh, yeah, off that, that, that one piece. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes. Come on, Brian. All right, fine. <laughs> I can't keep up. V final on, minus V initial. I apologize. I might not even get to the lab today. I think this is really cool. I think it's important, too. And I'll tell you yeah. what. The lab is designed to work around Nerf guns. So if you guys have a Nerf gun at home, <laughs> we're going to do it. In fact, not only that, we're going to build our own Nerf guns that will fire marbles. Stronger Much than deadlier gun. than actual Nerf guns, but cooler, way cooler. And I need your help to redesign this thing. Oh, uh, basically, can we make it automatic? We have a cannon. I kind of designed something, but it didn't doesn't work exactly. So I need to kind of change the specs on it. We're gonna build our own cannons. We're gonna basically perform the lab that we're gonna be doing today on these cannons. And then your midterm is gonna be firing these cannons in an all-out war. How destructive can we go? Um, you cannot kill people. Dang. Okay, so let me simplify this just a little bit. Is that all right with you? Yes. All yes. I'm going to distribute is this one half and the t. So I have v naught times t <laughs> plus one half v final times t minus one half v initial times t. I told you this is algebra that you've seen before. You've seen how to distribute something into a parenthesis. Yes. yes. You might not have seen it like this. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. See, this is what I'm getting at. This is this part is freaking you out, but physics is not hard. It's just using algebra that you've seen before. Yeah. In a way that maybe you haven't seen before. I screwed up. Okay. You ready? I'm gonna combine like terms. Uh, I see a whole v naught t minus half of a v naught t. That's half. That would give you half of a v naught t. Yes. Plus a half of a v final t. At this point, I can say, well, there's a half in both of them. There's a t in both of them. I can pull out that half and the t. OK? And the d is actually my delta x. Right. So yeah. there it is. Done. So this is extremely simple. This comes from y equals mx plus b. Yes. Yeah. 
our slope. This comes from finding the area of a triangle and a rectangle. And a rectangle. <laughs> Has physics been hard yet? No. I mean, yes, not this quite. Looks that, crazy. Wrapping my mind that, around but it. But it's actually not that bad. Okay. Wrapping my mind right, around it. Right, right. All right. So you ready? Let's let's continue this game. Can I erase this? Sure. Is my uh, brain yeah. going to explode at some point? Uh, this is going to be the, the the extent of of how hard it gets, and then I'll have a few comments to say, and then we'll wrap it up, cool. and then we'll we'll start up on cool. physics, on other stuff. But I'm I'm excited because we're actually getting into it. This is like what it is. All right, I'm going to do this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to make three using one and two. Make three using one and, and two. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to write two, but I'm going to substitute V with one. Just give me an idea of what I'm doing. Yeah, that's so I'm going to write down two, but I'm going to replace a v with v naught plus at because that's what it one is. says that v is equal to v naught plus at. Yes, this is substitution. This is just the substitution game that you played back yeah. in like algebra. solving algebra, right? So I'm just saying delta x is equal to. Can I make it as one half v naught plus? Now here's the substitution part, right? Because one half v naught plus V naught plus, plus AT times T. Doesn't look too hard. Did I freak anybody out there? No. Alice? No. Good? All right. Let's let's uh, distribute this stuff again. Um, delta e. X. Actually, you know, before I distribute, can I just change this to, uh, I'll just write it down again. I'm kind of lazy, but I'll do it for your sakes. Um, 2 V naught plus AT. All I did was I just... Combine the two v-naughts in the like terms, yeah. in the parentheses. Are we cool? Yep. All right. Delta, Delta x, I'm going to distribute in this one half, and I'm going to distribute in the t at the same time. Tell me if that freaks you out. We'll just go like this. Just start using capital T's. Are we cool? Yes. Oh, by the way, notice that I make my t's with a little hook on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing to do. The reason being is because I'm, I'm going to have a lot of plus signs and T's, so I don't want to confuse you. Yes. All right. Um, you'll learn to kind of make those adaptations and changes to your, to your map. Um, this one half cancels out with that too. This T times T makes it T squared, obviously. So it's delta X equals V naught T plus one half AT squared. Roger. We made three. We made three. Using one and two. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I'm actually not going to make four for you. Um, I'm going to make you make four for yourself. Can I Can I erase it? Do you have this written out? No. One, Good. Two, three. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to erase it. Um, this is actually one of the most important derivations. And it really just comes from, like, where did this come from? Slope. Mx plus b. Why goes mx plus b? Where did this come from? The triangle, uh, triangle and, and rectangle. rectangle. An area. Yeah, area. And then where did this come from? From a slope a and an area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Isn't it not cool? Oh, now All I right. get the joke at the beginning. All right, I'll tell you what. Um, what was the joke at the beginning? Making one and two make three. Yeah, so I... Yeah, I, yeah. no. Made it three just, it just clicked one and two. I'm a little slow. Huh? Oh, okay, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how to get four. All you do is you use one and two, and I think what you do is you write down. Um, let's see, what do you do? Okay, here's what you do. So via you use one and two, but you solve one of them, either or, for t. Oh. And then you replace the t into the other. One. So you take one, you solve for t. That's pretty easy. Okay. Uh, solving that for t. Do you mind if I do this algebra in my head real quick? Yes. I want to see if you guys can figure this out. 
I can, um, I can solve that for t. I go t is equal to v um, minus v naught all divided by a. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. I took the v naught onto the other side. Alice, do you see this? Mm -hmm. I divide it by a. That, yeah. That's it. Yeah. I did it in my head, but it's lower than you. Then you take this t and you replace it right there, and you'll get three, four. That's it. What? Yep. Really? Yep. In fact, you could do it right now. Sure. Do it right now. Well, I erase this, if you want. Wait, sorry, what? I was writing it down. You just take this T, you plug it into here, and you get... mess with it until it looks like this. You're gonna might you might be required to foil. Be crazy. Oh. <laughs> be careful with that foiling. It's crazy stuff. Ah. Oh my God! You're foiling my math yet again. All right, foiled my master plan. Let me show you how we're gonna use this equation because this is actually really important. Oh, yep, got it. Never mind. All right. So, did you guys get it? I'm just wondering. Yeah. You did? That's. It got in my head, and now it's processing. This but. is this, and then you, yeah. Oh, oh, geez. That is so. <laughs> that is really cool and somewhat confusing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. I got it. Let me show you guys how the units work because I made a big deal out of units and this is actually really important. Once you guys see the equations, let's make sure that the units all work out because you're gonna see, like I said, physics is all about taking this math and seeing it all come together in this amazing process that happens. Let's check the units on these things. We cool? Yeah. All right. I have a question for you. Um, Where does delta x come from? Though? That was super creepy how that worked. What if I did this? What is delta x? Come what from? is three meters? Delta x. That's just plus four meters. Sum of everything basically. Is three, what? Seven delta meters. X? Seven meters. Okay, good. That's not a trick question. Okay. Okay. I remember when Matthew told us the answer is too easy. If I were to look at only the units, I would say the units of this is meters. The units of this is meters, and the units of this is meters. meters. So when I'm talking okay. specifically about the units, if I told you a meters plus a meters is equal to meters, okay. that won't freak you out, right? Mm -hmm. Because remember, I, there's going to be numbers that come up next to it, but I, all I know is that this meters can add to that meters, and that gives me meters. Are we cool? Yes. All right. The, similarly, I can even do this. Yes. Now, if you think about the units of that, that's going to be weird. Meters minus meters is equal to meters. Most people would say meters minus a meter is equal to zero. No, that's not true. Not if, you, not not if you're talking about measurements. measurements. All right, all right. What about this? What about this? What is three meters plus seven degrees Celsius? That's incomplete. That, 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 that should not that compute. Doesn't make any that's a what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, that's my. You cannot add modern history of Hawaii class in a nutshell. Right you there. cannot add temperature and, and distance. That right. doesn't make any sense. Two different measures. If you want to add things, they better, they darn well better be the same unit. Yep. <laughs> right? All right. So I'll tell you what. Right in the head. Unless you get 10 meters Celsius. Let's check the units of these equations. Okay? Velocity is measured in what? Uh, the change the, um, acceleration. The change in acceleration? Yeah, the change in acceleration. Meters per meters second. Per, oh, that's what you're asking. It, which one is the squared? It's so I'm, I'm going to check the right-hand side. Okay. Uh, meters per second plus yeah. what is acceleration measured in? I'm looking at just the units of one. Uh, acceleration, would that be? That's the squared one. Is that meters per second squared? Meters per second squared. Very good. Okay. I knew that. What's the time measured in? Seconds. 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 We're Very assuming good. No, just seconds. The seconds. Okay. Okay. Look at this. There's a second over here canceling out with that. Seconds over there. Looking at the units. Right? Right. What is a meter per second plus a meter per second? Meter, meter, per, meter per, per second. second. So I'm saying that the right-hand side of 1 is in meters per second. What's the, what is it supposed to be? Well, we're measuring a velocity, so it better darn well be meters per second. Do you see how the units all work out? Oh, 
Oh, I see. I, I touched just a little bit on this in chemistry, but then I didn't make a big deal out of it. In Is that physics, to say that Brad did like freak out? In physics, I'm going to make a big deal out of it. Roger. Gotcha. That's 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 the thing where remember I told you like uh, R is eight point three six or eight point three I forgot what R was but remember the, the universal gas constant yeah, yeah 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 and then it was like kil or kilogram you know something per carbon mole flashcard somewhere or something like that and then I had the units right yeah and I didn't really make a big deal out of it well in physics the units will always help you see the units are the best thing in physics because what happens is You'll get an answer, and you can check whether or not your answer is correct. If they're not the right. If the units work, well, at least it won't <laughs> guarantee you that the answer is correct. But at least you know that you're on the right track. Yeah. Or even better, if your units don't work, then you, you know, know guaranteed wrong. it's wrong. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's check the units of, let's say, this one. The right hand side. What is a meter? What is velocity? Meters over second. Meters over second. Add to that a velocity. Meters, meters over second. second. Divide that by. Two. What is the units of two? Uh, of two units. Time? No, not time. That's acceleration. It doesn't have a unit. It's, it's just number two. two. It's just it's, two. It's not two feet. It's not two seconds. It's two. Time trick question. So the units of two is nothing. It's yeah. yeah. It's just two. It's, it's just a straight up number. Yeah. Deal two. with it. So what about the units of time? Uh, seconds. Seconds. Good. Yeah. All right. So meters per second plus meters per second is meters, meters per second. second. Times seconds. seconds. This cancels out with that. So it's just meters times over two. Right? Then and my delta answer should X be is, is measured in meters. 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 Wow. Are we cool? Yes. All right. Let's try the units of three, and then at, at that point, I'm done. I'm, go I'm done. I'm going to show you how to apply this to the lab, and we'll actually get started with this lab. Yes. All right. Velocity on the right hand up. side of this equation right here. Velocity is measured in. Meters over second. Meters over second. Time is measured in seconds. seconds. Okay, plus one half. That's one half. That's just one half. Just it doesn't have okay. units. Deal okay. with it. If it did, that'd be weird. Right. We're only looking at just the units here. Oh. And then a two. Uh, what is the a? So that's yeah. meters per second squared. Yeah. Good. What is the t? Uh, t is t another squared. s. T squared. S, t t squared, s, is s squared, s squared, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this cancels out with that. This whole thing cancels out with that. And we get meters. You get meters plus a meters is meters. 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 Delta X. Delta. Yeah. Is, is measured meters. in meters. meters. Okay, this is is Woo. it's it's, it's simple cool. and yet oh, hurts my brain. No, right. it's just it's pretty basic stuff. No, yeah, yeah. I like it. I love I love this stuff. I like it this a lot. Alright, so I think that the first lab we're gonna do, I'm gonna explain the theory to you real quick. Sweet. And then uh, and then we'll just get straight into it. The first lab we're going to do is we are going to um, drop a ball, yes, or Rest. drop an object. It doesn't matter from a certain height. Yes. And we're going to time exactly how long it takes to reach the bottom. Okay. In fact, actually, I think what we're going to do is we're going to predict how long it takes to reach the bottom. Because here, let me tell you a story real quick. I used to, I, 60 pounds ago, I used to rock climb like every other day, and I was actually, I was, I was huge, but I was also like really. Thinned out, okay? And, um, Kaden? Yeah, you're in physics lab, right? Yeah. Yeah, come on up here. You missed, like, some cool stuff. I'm serious. It's all on you, man. It's cool. five papers I, worth. I, I recorded. I recorded it, so you can watch it. But Man, it was so cool. All right, ready? 60 pounds ago, I used to rock climb. And I used to um, climb to the very top of these cliffs in California. And then I would jump off the... The edge, and obviously there would be water, underneath, right? I wouldn't do <laughs> you that. Wouldn't be here, right? Right, now. Just right. But it would be like a hundred feet, sixty feet, all of that kind of stuff. I would jump off. Would you time yourself as you fell? And I would time myself as I fell. I got one of those watches that you know were waterproof, and I would just beep, and I would hit the ground, and as soon as I hit the ground, beep, I would time myself. And from that, I was able to figure out exactly how tall that cliff was. What? That's how nerdy I am. <laughs> Yeah, I just climbed this dope this dope cliff, and I'm gonna jump off of it and see if I how tall. Right, right. I used to do dinos off of these things. Like what a dino is is where basically you're you're crouched up like this, and you gotta leap backwards, then grab onto the cliff, and hopefully you don't fall off. I used to love rock climbing. It just was my thing. 
and now I'm fat and old and cannot it's, climb it's, up. It is very dangerous yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> now it's now I basically look like the boulder. Mm -hmm. um, but wouldn't it be cool if you're on? Like I found myself in this situation often where like they're asking how tall is this thing, and I'd just be like, well, let me check. One, two, three. Okay, it's this tall. That would be cool. Right? And that's and this is actual application of physics. This is actual application of the math you've learned. Finally. So now we know that the you thing that governs this rock falling okay. is this equation right here. Let's figure out how to apply it. Okay. Would it be alright with you instead of delta x, I'm gonna write a delta y. Why? Explain why. I'll explain why. It's very simple. Because usually when I'm talking about delta x, I'm talking about things going this way. When I talk about delta y, so I'm talking right. about things going this way. Oh, keep that. that makes sense. <laughs> and when I'm dropping something, it's going, it's going this way. way. It's going Are we cool? Yes. That's clever. Cool. All right. And then what I like to do is I always always like to do this. V not y t plus one half a y t squared. May I ask why? Because this tells me that I'm talking about the y direction, so I need to talk about the velocity initial in the y direction, yeah, yeah. and the acceleration in, in the, the y direction. Correct. Are we cool with that? Yes. All right. In fact, I'm actually going to freak you out a little bit more. I'm going to say, well, delta y is equal to 1 half g t squared. Yes. I'm just going to throw that little nugget out there. Oh, that was in the quiz. I remember that. What quiz? The one that's due today. Oh, is it? Oh, cool. So. All right. Here's the equation. I did. Where? What happened to the v naught? That's my question. To you. you got rid of it. Why did I get rid of it? Does it apply? Velocity is is the same as the acceleration. No. 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 It is not. It. You Think about what's need happening. Need velocity to measure distance. You ready? Here's the scenario. Mind you, at a much shorter scale. What is its velocity? What is its velocity at zero. right now? Zero. 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 What is its velocity, once I let it go, the, the experiment starts. Right. What is the velocity the instant I let it go? Still zero. It's still zero. And then gravity, takes well gravity is always pulling on it, but my hand is holding right. it up here. Yeah. And then once I let it go, the force of my hand is not pulling helping it, it, so the gravity is the only thing acting on it, and it's speeding it up. But it didn't go from here to instantly 10 miles per hour at the instant I let it go, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So would you say that the velocity initial is? Zero. That's why I just got rid of it. Oh, because zero times t is still zero, so I don't even yeah, care about so, that whole yeah. term. Okay. Are we cool? Yeah, yes. that makes sense. Now why did I change the a y into a g? Because acceleration is based on gravity. Because acceleration in the y direction is Gravity, and so I wanted to make a, a symbol that I was very comfortable with. So gravity's g. Are we cool with that? There we go. All right. Um, Golly g. Let's see. I think in this equation I have you dropping it and then trying to figure out the time. So why don't we do it this way? Oh, by the way, this part you might. This part we need to be very careful with. Technically, I think this is supposed to be negative g. Really? Why? Watch it. This, this is this squared. is gonna freak you guys out. Uh, positive and negatives are gonna get you guys in trouble a lot this yeah. quarter. I'm just letting you know. Right. But think about this. Which way is gravity pointing? Down. So there are negative. That makes sense. Yes. If it's pointing up, it's gonna could be I ask positive. Why does that matter? If it's pointing down, it's negative. 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 That does make a big difference. Okay. I'll show you why it makes a big difference. There is a subtle thing that I think, right now it's at h initial, right? And over here it's at h final. It's lower than its initial height. Huh? It's lower than its initial height. Yeah, it's lower. Oh, that's a good point. So delta y is actually h final minus h initial. Actually, you usually see delta y as y final minus y initial, but Y final is your H final, yeah. and your right. Y initial is your Y initial. It's the same. But 
H final is the final thing. The ground. So it's zero. Right. Oh, so then it's just so it's just H initial. Oh, I see. Well, but like you said, it should be negative because the final height is lower than the initial height. But that works. So your your change in height is going to be a negative number, right? Because you went down overall. We cool with that? All right. Anyway, um, solve for t. Come on, you guys. You're good at algebra. I bet you I could get her to solve for t. Can you guys do it? Fine. Tell me what to do. You would have to first add the like one half. Like get rid of the one half. half first. All right. Add the one half. No, you uh, multiply the one half. Multiply by two. Oh. Yeah. Come on. Both sides, of course. You knew that. Oh, can I get rid of these negatives? They're on both sides. Yeah. yeah. So you can just make them both positive. There you go. Sure. All right. So this two gets canceled with that two, and I get two h naught is equal to g t squared. I want to get t all by itself, my friend. Take the square root of. This is where this is where the algebra that I'm telling you about. This is where you guys are going to have so much trouble because algebra. This is basic algebra. Clearing out fractions is basic algebra. I taught you how to do that in algebra two, my friend. I brain eating it. I think I had you. Do I have you currently for algebra two, or I had you last year? I taught you how to do this too. So don't tell me you guys don't know how to do algebra. And I hit you with algebra in chemistry like nobody's business, right? You learn how to solve all kinds of crazy stuff. And you, I'm teaching. I succeeded. So. All right. Yeah, you did. You did good. All right. Get t all by itself. Come on, help me out. Square root of. Well, I take square root of two first. Not yet. No. Divide the G. Divide, divide the G. Come on, you guys. Now take the square root. Alright, now take the square root. I just I just it, if you would have got the same thing, I just would have taken the square root first. No, you would have gotten something different. I would have gotten something different. Uh, T is equal to the square root of two H naught over G. We cool? Yes. Okay. Let's check the units just to make sure that we're all good. What's the units of h? Uh, meters. Or meters. It's a, it's a height, yeah. right? I'm just assuming. Oh, what's the units of two? I forgot to ask. Two. Nothing. Nothing. It's just two. So I'm just going to get rid of that. What's the units of gravity? Uh, meters. Meters per second squared. Per second. Squared. It's an acceleration. Okay. Right. All right. Do you guys know how to deal with a fraction over a fraction? Refresh me, please. Have you seen? Do you see that this I've is a seen fraction it, over yeah, fraction? Yeah, but I just seem kind of like up, not that one. Would it be right if I wrote this as meters over one divided by meters per second squared? Yeah, because. The same and now it's a fraction over a fraction. Yes. You yes. guys know how to do with it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What you do, I'll, I'll tell you how to do with it. It's really easy. You take the fraction on the bottom. Right. You flip them upside down, and you multiply them by the one on top. Oh yeah. Oh right. Right. You take the denominator, reciprocate it, and then multiply it. Cool. Cool. So you got meters over one times second squared over meters. Oh, why did, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, you just take the guy on the bottom. And I go, why did that freak me out so much? It's because it's so much on one thing. It's All right, so meters cancel stacks over meters. Stacks. Cool. Oh, but remember, I forgot to tell you, we're taking the square root of this whole thing. Oh. So what is the square root of second squared? Seconds. Seconds. Just seconds. What is the answer supposed to be measured in? Seconds. Do you see how the units all come together to make something amazing happen? All right, so here's what I want you to do in the lab. I want you to, I think what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to drop certain things from a certain height, and I'm going to let you choose whatever height you want. And I'm going to see if you guys can verify whether or not this equation works. This entire um, lab is built into a quiz. Now, I'll tell you this now. I'm going to tell you this right off the bat. I actually designed this this lab, this first three labs, and the reason why I'm giving you like all three labs at one time, real quick, because I designed this for my seventh grade class. The seventh graders were way too immature for this lab because they kept on shooting each other with the Nerf guns. <laughs> I figured I could trust my physics. Totally students. not gonna happen. Well, at least we're eye goggles <laughs> while we shoot each other. Okay. Okay. We will try our best. And and if, if the principal or somebody else comes up, pull them up to the sky. Just like drop the we are, we are we are like listening and everything. And Miss Sononini won't tell on us. I'm a fat rat. We should go into another Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Do you guys uh, want to partner up? Girls with the girls, boys with the boys, or boy uh, girl, boy girl? 
Don't matter to me. All right, it's up to you guys. You guys do it. So I think that this lab is called lab, air trajectory lab one, dropping the ball. So you guys get a ball and you go through this thing. And I actually literally went through all of the math with you already. Roger. Have fun. Where are we dropping? Anywhere. Uh, like inside or you went like outside? Let's outside. drop it from inside. I don't want to. Let's, we're not, not, drop, let's not drop it from the third floor just yet. Oh, come on. It would be great though. but That would be We'd get awesome. in trouble, but it would be worth it. Yeah. We're learning physics. Dude, we've, we have so many opportunities to get in trouble with this class that why don't we save our getting in trouble for a better bigger, things. better thing. All right. right. It is physics. All right. Open up the lab. I mean, it, the lab is actually built into the quiz. Oh, it's Dude. on the computer. It's on the computer. Gotcha. I'll go with him. So my friends, that is the class. Let's do it. Open Let's up do it. Let's do it. open up Let's do it. air trajectory lab one, two, and three and have fun with that. I basically gave you the lecture to help you out with figuring this out. I even included lectures on each of these things. I don't have any print ups for the lab. It's all all the instructions are right inside of those quizzes. Hey, you know, we can't take this. I can't